Yo, what up? It's Aaron Moses, gang. And this is uh, episode one, Blind Day Love with Arlette, man. The same lady who made Pop the Balloon. So let's get into it, man. <laughs> And we are here today with Blind Date Love. Now, before we begin, if you'd like to be featured in any of these upcoming episodes, the submission form will be linked in the description box below. Make sure you go ahead and fill that out. Now, this is going to be separate from Pop the Balloon. So if you want to be featured in this specific segment of Blind Date Love, go ahead and click on that submission form below just to go ahead and be considered, and we'd love to have you on. So let's go ahead and get started. As you see here, we do have our wonderful single lady next yeah. to me. I'm gonna go ahead and have you introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Sherelle. I'm 22. I'm an architectural draft. I bet you she's from Atlanta. Well, they're in Arizona, but she looks like an Atlanta chick, north side, north side. So um, I came on the show today like I'm ready to find love. So I'm really excited. Okay. Yeah. Um, just so the guys can know a little bit more about you, what are some things you like to do for fun? Yeah. So a lot of like my spare time is usually spent with like my friends or my family. But like personally, my own hobbies, like um, I've recently been getting into DJing. Okay. I don't do it in public yet. Oh. But um, <laughs> and that's something like I like to do for fun and like going to the gym. Like that's just like my usual go to right now. OK. Yeah. All, right. All right. So we do have five single men on the other side of this. All right. I will say this. DJing, that's a cool hobby. And it's a hobby that could be profitable. It's something that she could actually make money with. So all these guys who have a video game hobby, they probably shouldn't say they do because she doesn't have a hobby that's just burning up time and energy and there's no way for her to make money with it. Nine times out of 10, these the video gamers are not gonna be like streamers or YouTubers or anything like that. So, yeah, that's not going to be a, a hobby that's attractive to her. I don't know why anybody would play video games a lot, more than an hour a day, and you're not making money, but who knows? In. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're just waiting to hear more about you and you more about yeah, them. Absolutely. And we do see here you have a set of questions. I do. And we're going to go through each round. You're going to ask them a couple of questions, whatever uh -huh. it is, get to know them. And after each round, I'm going to have you eliminate a guy until we are down to your match. Okay. Nice. You ready? Yes, I am. I'm guys, so are we ready? Are we ready over there? Most definitely. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. They, so they don't sound ready to me, but whatever. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have you start yeah, with your first question. Yeah, so my first question is, is, like, can you state, like, a fun fact about yourself or just, like, anything, like, you know, to let me get you get to know you more? And let's start with your name and age as well. So we'll start mm -hmm. with uh, contestant number one. Hey, I'm contestant number one. My name is Rich. I'm 25 years old. And I would say a fun fact for me would be um, being involved with kids. I love the community, so that's something that I'm most definitely interested in. Um, just being able to connect with children and to uh, provide resources to people that are less fortunate. Okay. Nigga, you got to be more specific. You said, no, nah, bro, I did not know he was a multitasker. Look at this dude's eyes, bro. And you got braces? Nah, bro. You said you like to be involved with children. You gotta be very, you gotta be specific. I'm not trying to say that he does anything weird, but like, what do you, you work for the YMCA? Or you do the Big Brother program. 
you play basketball with the kids on your off days and then you give back to the community. That's very vague, bro. And you led with this whole, yeah, I mean, I get it. It's a good strategy, but nah, man. Ah, that's really sweet. Uh, contestant number two? Uh, I'm contestant number two. I'm Andre. I'm 30. A fun fact about me is uh, I do, I like to make clothes. Uh, I taught myself how to sew. Uh, I taught myself how to do a, for a lot of things. I like to be very hands-on with stuff. And now for... You know what sucks about this so far? I can already tell. They would be acting way different. Number one, if they could see this woman, they would have a little bit more enthusiasm about who they're talking to because men are visual, and this is not fair on their part. Okay, that's number one. Number two, they're sitting down. If you notice when I popped the balloon, they were kind of rocking back and forth, rubbing their hands. That moves their energy, bro. That's getting that's stimulating their masculine energy. Second dude, definitely disappointed me. The fun facts, these hobbies, and this. Nah, bro. This is not how I want to answer this question. Contestant number three. You can Contestant you number three. Up. My name is James. Um, what I like to do is mobile bartend. I run my own mobile bartending business. Been doing that for about a year and a half, and see that was smart, bro. We got niggas leading with playing with kids, whatever that means, uh, making clothes, which is cool. Started off with the business, man. Talking about them, talking about the muti, and not only the muti is independent. I really enjoy it. Uh, now, contestant number four. Um, contestant number four. My name is Tavier. Uh, I love to make music. Love all wow. things music, love to go to concerts, festivals, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty much it. All right, and contestant number five. That was horrible. Hi, I'm contestant number five. My name is Kai. Um, a fun fact about me, I guess, I love cars. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur. I just bought my first water and ice store. Um, yeah, I, just, I don't know. That was a big money. Okay, all right. These niggas are drier than the back of my knees right now. What's wrong with the <clears throat> What's wrong with these dudes? You see the second dude smiling? You got the worst answer, my boy. I don't know why you over there smiling with your uh Nice to meet you all. <laughs> yeah, very excited. Nice to meet them. <laughs> okay, go ahead and take it off with your next question yeah, for them. So Definitely something I want to know about you guys is... It's like somebody. I can't put my finger on it. Them lips, though. Have you ever cheated? And do you think it's like a deal breaker in a relationship? Okay, we jump right on in. Yeah. Let's start with We're contestant number one. <laughs> contestant number one. Uh, in my younger years, of course, cheating is something that you do because you learn in a relationship. That's not how you answer that, bro. Yeah, you see how you see everybody's face except for Lil Easy E. In the middle, this nigga said, of course I cheated because that's something that you do. <laughs> that is not what she wants to hear. Go home, bro. Don't come back outside for about two, three days. Um, but in the older years, I wouldn't say so. So no. And then a deal breaker, would cheating be a deal breaker? What form of cheating? If you're communicating with someone else, I kind of feel like I'm someone who is a great man, so I don't necessarily kind of wouldn't give in to that in a sense, but it's like, if you're so involved with me, there shouldn't be nobody else. Okay. Okay, contestant number two. He's gonna be an ugly ass old man. I just have to throw that out there. Uh, contestant number two, no, I never cheated, and uh, it's definitely a deal breaker with me, like, uh, I don't share. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and contestant number three. Contestant number three, yes, I have cheated. I don't think it's a deal breaker. Um, I feel like it depends on the relationship, uh, working on it, uh, getting through it together, and just growing. And if you guys got to go your separate ways or move forward with it together, then, you know, that's what you got to do. Nigga, so you would accept a woman back if she cheated on you? You think that's, you think she wants to hear that? It's, re I, it's really not about what she wants to hear it's for the most part. It's about what's true. But it's also about how you can deliver these things. Like, nah, none of these dudes. The second dude. Okay. Contestant cool. number four. Um, contestant number four. Honestly speaking, I don't understand the reason to cheat because you know, for me, I get in relationships because I, you know, 
aspire that relationship. I want that relationship. So uh, personally, I haven't done that. But um, and I do think it's a deal breaker because if you've cheated once, you're probably gonna do it again. So there you go. Okay, and, and contest. That was some game right there. Number five. My boy been reading. Um, contest number five. Personally, I've never cheated. Um, I do think it's a deal breaker because I feel like it's a choice. If you chose to make that decision, you know, step out on me, you willingly and, you know, consciously made that decision. So you weren't thinking about me or how I would feel. So personally, it's a deal breaker for me because if it were me, I would just leave personally. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and throw in one more question in this round. Yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and. So, uh, my last question for this round is How yeah. open are you to therapy and issues related to mental health in men? Mm. Okay, let's switch it up. Let's start mm -hmm. with contestant number five first. Ooh, uh, contestant number five. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, my parents work in the behavioral health field, so I mean, mm. I'm always open to have kind of kind of hip to it. Um, I'm not against therapy. I just hope it's for the right reasons and not trying to like, you know, prove a point or try and get over on somebody of like, you know, pointing out their downfalls or where they lack. But um, I'm definitely, you know, down for it. Okay. Contestant yeah. number four. Um, I'm contestant number four. I think therapy is very important for everybody. And uh, personally speaking, I've dealt with some issues that, you know, I needed therapy myself with, but um, didn't really go seek that. So I... So... We could see that you didn't seek therapy. Cause what's up with that shirt, my boy? With that watch, my boy? Yeah, you look crazy right now, bro. I believe you. Hey, you know. Them big ass earrings. Bro, you just, he, he's just dressed terribly. He's dripless, bro. I feel like that's very important for everybody to do, to experience, so, um, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. number three. Contestant number three. I think mental health is really important, but I'm not the type to really go to therapy, right? Oh, nigga. You don't say that. I mean, he already lost. He already lost. No, I'm open to it, but I'd rather just communicate and see where it is with it. Horrible answer. Uh, contestant, too. I would say I'm open to it. I've actually been to therapy uh, when I was in the military, so, yeah. It's nigga. You told her that you made clothes. That was the fun fact. The military, G. The military. You know how to take people's souls. That's a fun fact for me. They helped me out, so I wouldn't mind going. Like, if I had a problem, I would, wouldn't would mind going to seek therapy. Okay. okay. And number one. Contestant number one. I say I'm most definitely open to therapy. I've been in therapy. Um, i I do social work as well, and so That's so I'm you, helping people out. That's what you should have said, bro. I do social work, not I play with kids when I'm bored. Don't say that no more, bro. All the time, and so uh, even healing journals, black men healing journals, if those individuals who never had one get one. So I'm all in support of mental health. Nigga, you said, of course you cheated because that's what you do. Genuine, it's already over, bro. You talking about shadow book, workbooks and healing journals bro it's too late man it's too late stay woke hmm. all right mm -hmm. i know you heard a lot i did hear a lot <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately it is time where we do have to eliminate someone mm -hmm. from you know our lineup of men yeah from uh, the five different guys we've heard, whose answers weren't you really resonating with? I think for me, the person I wasn't resonating with the most was contestant number three. Okay. Um, reasons are is the cheating, and mm. um, I don't think that's something in a relationship that you can necessarily back, like jump back. I'm sorry. Like back pedal from. Oh, because he said I misinterpreted that. Because he said that cheating is not a deal breaker. She didn't even understand his answer. He was saying that he'll take you back, but you didn't get that though. You could, he told you you could shuck somebody's corn, but I told you guys though, she didn't respect that answer, man. Yeah, like recover like, I from, I guess. I just don't think like that's something you can necessarily work through. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's my reasoning. And okay, so we're eliminating contestant number three. Contestant number three, yes. Okay, so contestant easy. number three, let's have you come on out. Three. See, because I'm thinking that she understood that question, but either way, I mean that answer, but either way, nah, that was just not lit.
<laughs> if you want to go right on over there. Hey. <laughs> Wait a minute now. She brought something for your boy. I didn't see. I didn't see that last time. Hold on, hold on. She brought something for daddy to look at. Hold on, let me see that. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to go right on over there? <laughs> mm. Can I get a hey man? That's enough. I don't need to see all of that. I got other things to do. <laughs> all right. So if you want to remind us of your name again. James. James. Okay. So James, she ended up eliminating you because yeah. of you. Look, if both of y'all were all black, but you wanted her to let her shut corn. Right? Cheating thing and all of that. Um, <laughs> If you want to kind of elaborate on what you stated a little bit more, or if, do you understand where she's coming from I as well? I understand where she's coming from. I yeah. feel like it's a deal breaker for a lot of people. It, like I said, it, def it depends on the relationship. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, yeah. we do thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. Thank, thank you. So I appreciate thank it. Thank you for your time. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was our first elimination. That was our first elimination. Nigga, look at this. If that's what you meant, maybe I just interpreted it wrong. But if you say to a woman, I've cheated before. I don't plan on cheating, but if I do cheat, you should take me back. What is wrong with you, sir? What were you thinking, bro? Even though I misinterpreted what you said, now that I understand what you said, yeah. I mean, I say I say something dumb every day, but nah, nah, not like that. Go ahead and move on to round two. Hit him with okay, the first question. Okay, yeah. So my. First question for the second round for you guys is, do you prefer a partner that's more similar to you or different? Okay, let's start with contestant number one. Contestant number one, I would say um, it kind of depends. I feel like differences can't. Bro, why don't got no socks on, man? You don't even got dress socks on? I just noticed that. Make each other better, but also those similarities are important as well because I want to do things with you. I want to go places with you, but I also we do have differences. Then I would be comfortable with learning what you like, and then you learning what I like, and then we do it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Contestant number two. Um, contestant number two. I would say it kind of yeah, it just depends on the relationship. Obviously, we would have to have some things that are different so that I would be able to get to know you, and you would be able to get to know me. But on the other hand, we would definitely share some of the same things as well because. I mean, if we're going to be working on something or a relationship, we are obviously going to have some of the same interests, but it's kind of going to go both ways. All right. And contestant number four? I'm contestant number four. I'll just say, you know, pretty similar to these guys. Um, it does really depend for me. I find I'll say this, bro. When you go on these types of shows, just in life, you just want to be prepared to be different. You don't want to ever say... Well, I pretty much feel the same as these guys <clears throat> because what do you have to offer? Why should she pick you if you think the same as another dude? She wants to be different in life, relatable to others, but exceptional. Like, And why you got your belt hanging out the front like that? That's a belt. The more you're similar with somebody, the more, you know, you can connect with them. So for me, I like to make music and do all things music related. So I like to go to concerts, festivals, um, do fun things, you know what I mean? And if you're not into that, it might just, you know, it might hinder, you know, our relationship just, just slightly. But I'll, I'm open to anything, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Nah, man, open-minded. Just like the late, great Sinful the Peace said, man, open-minded. Is open behind it. Don't say you just open to anything, bro. Message. And number five. Uh, contest number five. Um, I I'm kind of agree with everybody else. I do like the. Why well, don't got you don't got no t-shirt on? What? Who raised these dudes? We got the first dude with no socks, and you don't got on a t-shirt, bro. This is disturbing. You supposed to be black, man. You supposed to represent, bro. The mix of the, the two, but I do like having differences. I feel like me personally, I like to hear like a different side of a story or a different view, especially me. Um, I'm very used to kind of hearing people being the same, similar, same idea. So I like hearing that, um, you know, that, that other perspective on it. 
um, personally. But yeah. Okay, Lil Yachty. All right, good that responses. Good. Good. Yeah. Let's hit him with another question. Okay, so <laughs> my second question for you guys is what sets you apart from other men in today's dating culture? Mm. Okay, let's, let's switch it up. Let's start in the middle of the lineup. Let's start with number two. <laughs> yeah. All right, contestant number two. I would say what makes me different is I'm pretty hands-on and you don't have to tell me stuff. Like, I pay attention. I pay attention to detail. Um, and then, like, my background and, you know, just things that I've been through, you know, as far as, like, growing up around women, I, I was brought up around women. So, like, I just kind of, you know, I, I have more of a a caring side. I'm not just, like, uh, out here just, you know, with no feelings or, like, I, I actually think about my actions and stuff. And I'm the type, like, I don't do stuff that I don't want done to me because, like, I, I take things to the heart. So once I'm not feeling a certain way about you anymore, like, it ain't no coming back from that. So I kind of try to keep that in mind as far as. What are you talking about, man? What makes you different from other men in the dating market is because you are empathetic, you are spiteful, and you are raised around women. That's a lot of these dudes out here. I'm moving to, you know, so I wouldn't want to do anything that would make, I wouldn't want you to do to me, pretty much. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's hear from number five. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that actually made him stand out or be different from any other man. I think that just made him look good to her in his mind. Because that's not different. Niggas have empathy. What sets Too me aside, um, I feel like I'm my own person. So as far as like making decisions or just really, I feel like I've gotten as far as I've gotten based off my own experience and my own decisions I make. Um, I'm not easily influenced. And if it's something I want to do, I'm going to do it. Um, obviously consideration to like, you know, who I'm with, but uh, I'm not like a follower and right? I make my own way, my own motion. So if I mess up, that's on me. I don't have to like drag anybody down with me. Like, I don't know, open my own two business by myself. I bought my dream car at 24. I just feel like I've just been moving at my own pace, doing my own thing. So I'm not really into like the other limelight or anything like that. Okay. And number four. I don't think she's, I hope that he doesn't win. Why do I say that? Because I don't think she's gonna find bro attractive. I don't think she is. And I think that, yeah, they. I think that she might have the best vibe with him or what have you. I think the first dude might be a little, uh, I don't think they'll be a good match emotionally, but at the end of the day, I mean, I know what women find attractive physically and what they don't. I'm not trying to say bro is ugly or anything like that, but I will say this. I think the vibe is there, but I don't think that she's gonna find him attractive. And if, and if, when they see each other, she's gonna pop his balloon. Sorry. Um, contestant number four. Um, ultimately, what makes me different is that I'm like looking music? for marriage. To be real, um, That's somebody nasty, bro. and build with, grow with, have kids with, you know, spend the rest of my life with. So um, this is not just like a dating show for me. It's like, you know, I want to get to know you. You know, I want to know what you like, what you don't like. And hopefully, you know, the connection builds and builds and builds so we, you know, can further that relationship and ultimately just grow together in harmony on one accord, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. and contestant number one. Contest I think most men want to get married for whatever reason, so that's not different. Number one, um, I would say for me, just attention to detail. I think what makes me different is just, I enjoy uh, paying attention, attention to detail, being deliberate in what I do. And so with that being said, like everything that we're gonna set out to do, we're gonna be the best to do it. So whatever dreams you have, we're gonna conquer those. Whatever dreams I have, we're gonna conquer those. And just like contestant four said, you date to marry, so that's the intention. And so with intentionality and us coming together, what's stopping us? Okay, so the AI bot said that in 2022, 67.8% of men in the U.S. were married, while 48% had never been married. Black men is 43%, and Hispanic men, 37%. Oh, 46%, okay. 
wait, 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 excuse me. Black men in 1990 was 43%, and 52% of black men in 2022. Hispanic men, 37% in 1990, uh, and 46% in 2022. So 52 percent of black men were married in 2022. Why are you niggas out here getting married when you're broke, bro? 52 percent, only probably like two percent of black men should have been married, because we don't have the money to be getting married and divorcing and shit like that. But that doesn't make you special, sir, because most black men are married. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's throw one more question into this round. Okay, so uh, another question I want to know from you guys is, what do you think is your biggest red flaw or flag? Okay, let's start with contestant number one. Contestant number one, my biggest red flaw is how you answered that question about uh, what that fun fact that how you like to play with kids. Flag, it would be um, my heart. My heart uh, put me in, in bad spots of just kind of um, people who do me wrong to be able to continue on and love them. And I think sometimes that can get you taken advantage of. Okay. Contestant number two. Um, contestant number two, I would say the same thing. Kind of uh, like uh, just my heart for real. Like I be just too caring and like I, I look past a lot of stuff. I give way too many second chances and, you know, like I'm – I like to be for my people. So if I mess with you, I'm going to give you a thousand chances before I really just be like, all right, I'm done. So that's kind of like my biggest flaw right there. Nah, man, that's not good. That's dangerous to a female, bro. You should, you're supposed to be her protector, but you don't have enough discernment on when to give up on people. And you're supposed to be having a family and all of that. If you don't know when to cut people off, bro, that's not good for your family. And that's definitely not going to be good for your relationship. Okay, number four. A whole bunch of snakes in your um, I'm not trying to steal their answers or anything, but uh, <laughs> honestly, it is my heart because I feel like I'm a very nice person sometimes, and then that kind of comes off and rubs off in the, wrong, in the wrong way with certain people. So I just try to avoid doing that, you know what I mean? Because whoever I'm dating or, uh, you know, pursuing to marry, that's who I want to be with, so I don't want anything else to come in between that. So, yeah, I'll just say it's, it's my heart, my caring nature. It's how my family is. It's how I grew up. So can't help it, but I'm working on it. Okay. Nigga, first of all, you're supposed to be a rapper. You're supposed to have better answers than all of these people. You're supposed to be freestyling, supposed to be bringing these bars out, rhyming when you speak, you know? You're supposed to be, see, you want us to keep talking about your damn music. This is when you should have talked about your music. You should have said, and that's why music is my therapy. And actually, I just wrote a song. It's on all platforms. It's called Heartbroken with a Broken Heart. Um, but, yeah, that's one of the reasons that I haven't had therapy because I just think that it would take away from my, my musical abilities. And that's really what keeps me going is my love for like, bro, but you just, man, you supposed to bring it, bro. You supposed to represent, bro. And hey. our last guy, contestant number five. Um, contestant number five, I feel like for- And if you had therapy, you wouldn't have those issues, just saying. Me, it's probably gonna be like my personality. Um, I'm a people's person, so I do network and it's easy for me to talk to people and kind of like, you know, get my way and meet myself into a room. Nigga, you said your biggest red flag was your personality. Do you understand the question? Wait a minute now. Let me play that back. Maybe I'm tripping. Since I do network and it's easy, it's probably going to be like my personality. Um, I'm a people's person, so I do network and it's easy for me to talk to wait, people wait, wait, and kind of like. Let me run it back one more time so I can look at both of their faces. Five. Um, consistent number five, I feel like for me, it's probably going to be like my personality. Um, I'm a people's person, so I do network and it's easy for me to talk to people and kind of like, you know, get my way. I mean, myself. Look, I haven't studied micro expressions, body language, nothing, but they seem surprised, but they didn't seem turned off for whatever reason. Maybe I just, maybe cause I'm just tired because I just got off of work. But that didn't seem like a very good answer. If I asked a woman, what is a big red flag? And you say your personality, you know what? Maybe I'm just crazy. Let's go. 
to a room. Um, I feel like that, you know, especially for who, if I'm going to be with somebody, I feel like they have to be able to understand that and know that, like, I don't, I'm not like a quiet person, so I am going to be out networking. And I feel like, you know, they just have to be strong enough and, you know, have the enough security to be able to withstand that and know that I do talk. I'm not like a very quiet person. It's gotten me into rooms I wouldn't have gotten if I was quiet. So um, I just feel like it just needs to be respected. Like, you know, if I'm moving a certain way and I'm trying to do certain things, I expect you to understand that and allow me to do what I need to do to make sure we're good. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. That was round that two. It's round two. That made a lot of sense, but you are lucky that certain types of people, women, don't really go off of certain types of words or words in general. Okay, like overall compared to when you compare both of the genders. But no, you don't answer that question like that. You could have said my, the biggest red flag is my business mentality or my hunger to network something like that not your personality time to eliminate someone ah. who are you leaning towards oh. eliminating i am leaning towards contestant number one um i'm just kind of not feeling that initial draw to him okay um so yeah that's see we two for two i said he was gonna go first i was wrong then I said number three was going to go. Boom. We two for two, baby. My Almost reasoning today. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have you stand on over there. And like let's go ahead and bring out contestant number one. Oh, hello, hello. Hey. You can remind us of your name again. Rich. Pause, bro. I had to say that she would probably be the most uh, highly attracted to him compared to the rest of the three. But that's just me. Rich, okay, okay. Well, Rich, so she ended too. up eliminating you. I think she yeah. said she wasn't really yeah. feeling your response. You know who she looks like? She looks like my little sister with a smaller nose. Wow. Is how do you feel now that you've seen her? How do you feel now that you've seen him? Yeah. Like, what's going through your head? <laughs> I mean, very beautiful. I mean, you got to be yourself okay. and be honest, so that's how I move. Okay. Absolutely. Was there anything specific he said that you were like, oh, no? Um, No, I think I was just kind of leaning more towards other responses okay. versus his. So obviously, I don't want to waste your time mm -hmm. if I'm not getting that initial like impression or spark. So that's my reasoning today. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much All for right, coming thank on, you. Rich. Yeah. All right. Job. Let's go ahead and move on up. <laughs> All right, so we are now left with contestant number two, four, and, and five. five. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're down to our three remaining guys. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go on so to round three. My first question for you guys will be like, what is your favorite pastime? Okay, let's start with contestant number two. They all pretty much said it. My yeah. favorite pastime would. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just let that cook. Um, working on my businesses, like, uh, so I own a clothing line, so I like to make clothes. I make a lot of clothes from scratch. I like to think of a lot of new designs for upcoming seasons and stuff and stuff I want to drop. I also breed French Bulldogs, so I be with my dogs a lot. Or, you know, I, I, I do trucking as well, so I, I own a trucking company, so I like to take a drive. I'll take a drive at night and pretty much just get out, see the scenery, you know, relax. See, yeah, that's a good answer because you said all that, sh you said all of that stuff about you being Mr. Loverboy and you get your heart broken every three days. Um, yeah, sir, that's good that you threw some masculine hobbies in there and that you have a, a business and you went to the military, like all of that. Yeah, I just like every time I cry, I mean, I don't know why. Like, bro, what's wrong with you? Why would you even say that? But yeah, bro, come on, man, Dr. Softy. Just enjoy my time, peaceful time. I kind of like to, you know, just be about being in my own little area, just, you know, doing my own thing, not too much going out or anything. I like to, you know, find activities or something or, you know, really just work on myself for real. If I'm going to oh. pass time, I at least want to work on myself and go ahead further continue chasing my job goals and get into where i want to go okay thank Pretty you let's answer. hear from contestant number four 
Uh, I would say my favorite pastime music, is traveling. Music. Um, I yeah, really, I really, really. He that's smart. That's smart because you don't want to sound like a, a a starving artist. Cause he just flexed his money. Homeboy to your left just flexed his money, talking about he's a networker and all of that. Now you got to compete, saying that you like to travel, which is another way of saying that you have money. Smart man, Jay, fight back, man, fight back, man. To travel, um, cause there's so much beauty in traveling. Get to meet new people, network, uh, try new cuisines and all that different kind of stuff. See. Um, and I like to do a lot of adrenaline rushing things while I'm traveling or, you know, while I'm at home too. But um, yeah, I would just say overall, I really, really love to travel and go see new things, different things, because the world is so big and there's so many people in the world. So it's like, why not experience it, you know, and learn it for yourself. And it also opens your mind to uh, new things, new people. What's with you in this open mindedness, bro? I will say bro has some game, uh, some, some, some information in order to apply a uh, strategy to get what he wants out of this situation. All of these dudes seem uh, boring, but maybe it's just me. How they act versus how you act, because a lot of us can be very, very limited mm -hmm. to our current situations or environments. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I dislike is to just have a- Here, while we got this close up, boom. This is my sister right here. I keep forgetting she moved to Virginia. Does she not look like my sister? Does she not look like my sister? Hold on, let me see if she got one with her mouth closed. Okay, that's the only two we got. Boom, but anyways, yeah, that's pretty close. Maybe not her. Inside of mine, close. I like to be open to all people, understand all people, so traveling helps me open up and learn new things, see new things, taste new things, do new things, all the above. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And let's hear from contestant number five. Um, contestant number five, <clears throat> I do love the gym. I feel like that's like the greatest outlet in the world. I feel like we deal with all types of problems every day in our lives. I just feel like we all need to have a good positive outlet. Um, besides that, I'm going to go back to my car. <laughs> I love my car. I bought a Hellcat. I love it. It's the best thing in the world. I think this is some, what's that word? Uh, tricks. Why you flexing money, bro? This is a very trick-minded answer, bro. All of these dudes had trick-minded answers. Why you flexing your money? I mean, of course you want the chick to not think that you're a brokey, but damn, bro. I'd rather think that she thinks that I'm a brokey that I, and I have a great personality and I could protect her and give her beautiful children, which she wouldn't know that part. But I don't want to go into this relationship with you expecting me to do certain things financially for you. I want you to find that out later. I do like uh, what contestant number four said, traveling. Um, traveling is great. It's nice to see the world, especially for how big it is, especially when you live like in a local area and you haven't really been out. You don't understand how big the world is. Like when I, when I went to Paris. Nigga. This man said, nah, when I went to Paris. Man, they don't even stink that bad, bro. They do be eating that, like, that little stinky little cheese. But, psh, bro, it wasn't even that damn bad, man. I, I damn seen the Eiffel Tower and all that, bro. <laughs> that shit was blessing, bro. On God. On God. On God. Come on, bro. Open my mind. I'm like, yo, this is real. Like, this. She's going to pick him. This world is a real thing, so um, definitely the gym, my car, and traveling for sure. Pastime. This is like reverse, no, not reverse dirty macking, because dirty reverse dirty macking would be like you're complimenting them, but this is like, this is like happy dirty macking. Like I'm just gonna take what you said and put some yeast on it. Oh no no no, I'm gonna take what you said and I'm gonna put it on 20 foes. Like, psh, bro, you really just. You're really just trying to outbake these guys. Like, come on, bro, bring, get, bring your own cake if you're going to bake. Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely oh, felt them on the traveling man. part as well. Mm. Um, me, myself, I've She's been gonna... to 26 countries. Oh. Um, lying. Well, on, in, in the world, she's lying. Um, so I, I completely understand. I think it definitely opens your mind. To... She's going to delete contestant number two. The world and just gets yourself out of that 
bubble of you know living here in the U.S. Like so, yeah, it was really great to hear. Um, My next question for you guys though is, if you could take me anywhere on a first date, where? Nigga, you already know. I just said it. Like I said last time, kind of like contestant number two. I'll take your fine ass to Paris because you already know. You choose and why? Don't say some. No, you said all of this. All of this big stuff, you can't just say a cup of coffee. You can't just say, I'll take you to Starbucks. Let's see. Okay, let's start with contestant number four. Um, the studio. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like doing things that build core memories for us. So um, I know how to cook, so I'd like to cook for you. You know, Whoa. take you home. You know, we can go to the movies, do whatever activity we both enjoy doing together. I definitely want to do that. Um... But apart from that, you know, if that's not something that's in the picture, I would say, you know, a fancy dinner because we got to pop out because, you know, we that we that couple. But um, other than that, I, you know, picnic in the park is cool, too. Um, you know, you said like five things. Pick one, bro. Indecisive head ass. Can cook. Indecisive. I know the word. Food. We can go to the park, you know, enjoy that. Watch the sun. Why would you cook food and bring it to the park? Nigga, picnics is like sandwiches, salad. What you gonna cook lasagna, package it up, and put it in the car and drive to the park? You don't wanna eat it fresh? You're not even thinking. You're just saying whatever. I'm trying to get that Set. thing. You know, nature, all that good stuff. So I'll just say anything that's really building core memories. Um, whoever I'm getting to know, I wanna know what you like. So by the time we're doing these dates and things like that she said the first date cuz blood what is wrong with you dude I'm well, already confused a bit. I see. have like a mental picture of what's gonna make you smile what's gonna make you laugh and all that stuff so okay. so basically let me break down what he just said what I heard what I heard was I don't know what you like and I don't know your turn what turns you on and what turns you off so I'm just gonna throw out all of these ideas so you don't know that I'm not answering the question because I don't wanna answer wrong because I'm too scared of leaving without you because I know Arlette picks somebody that's just beautiful to look at, just wonderful. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's a pretty good strategy though. He's, he's a smart man. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and hear from contestant number five. Ass. Um, contestant number five, for a first date, I like to have fun, and especially if I don't know you, don't know me, we need to meet on, on a neutral ground. So I probably would probably find like a little cool speakeasy, trying to show you a little something different, you know, a little hole in the wall type of vibe. Um, yeah, I, I like I like them speakeasies. There, there's, a, there's a few of them out here, so definitely probably there, a restaurant, something. I mean, yeah, I'd probably go the speakeasy route and get a little snack. Okay. Cool. okay. You see, that's how you answer that. No fear. Look, I don't know. I've never been on a first date before with somebody that I never put my thing inside. So I don't know if you spend like, I don't know how long that would be. I'm guessing that would only take like three, four hours, less than that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, sound, that sounded like a good answer. Contestant number one. I'm sorry, contestant number two. Um, Contestant number two. Uh, it would kind of just depend, you know, once we started texting and I kind of felt the vibe, kind of see what, uh, which way I would more lean towards. But I would say something like outdoors, you know, like something cool, like cool vibe, something not too, you know, nothing like no club or nothing or, you know. He just gave up. He gave up a long time. Ago. After that traveling, that last question, he gave up. I would have just popped my balloon. Fuck it. Go home, bro. It's something that we could both at least have a conversation at and, you know, like enjoy the vibe and, you know, see some scenery or something, you know, might go somewhere. It might be a little something fun at the end of the night, like, you know, like a, some arcade type vibe or some something, some type of activity or something that, you know, we could just chill out, hang out, nothing too much high pressure or nothing, something relaxed, you know, so we could actually get to know each other. And it's not, you know, so so much pressure and so tense, you know, just come and have fun and, you know, just really fill each other out. Yeah, you see that look of defeat on his face? He gave up a long time ago. 
if he was smarter, he could have threw something in there. I'm not even going to give you that, but he could have said something different. I would have said something way different. I don't want to take yeah. you guys. All right, we have one more question for this round. Ah, so she, that nigga's going home. He already, we all know. So my final question for this round is, why do you think most relationships fail today? Okay, mm -hmm. let's start with contestant number two. I love that. I love that answer because you're going to say some weird sh Yeah, let's see. I would say social media for sure. Social media is like, it has everyone thinking it's just so much out there that it's not. And then like a lot of people are really just into the hype right now. Everyone is just so focused on not missing out on something and they think that they're going to miss out on something. So it like kind of tends to make people do things that you know you weren't even normally do or even really want to do but you just don't want to miss out and you want to be a part of the vibe or the whatever scene is going on so i would definitely say like social media is a part and like just you know like not being present versus being you know just in a whole nother world instead of being where you are okay and uh contestant number five good answer you know it sucks because he gave up he gave the best answer but we'll see. Contest number five, I'm definitely going to agree on the social media part. Um, I also think m music has a part to play into this. I feel like nobody really thinks for themselves nowadays. And it's like somebody's favorite artist says something, they're going to automatically believe it and go through it. And I just feel like it's just not like, for example, if you go out, you're going to see the same people going out. But if you look at it on social media, it looks lit. But if you see them at the club, they're just standing around like just doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Yeah, it looks cool, but if you're really there, if you really know what's going on, you're going to be like, yo, it's not really what's going on. So I definitely agree social media and music is just jading everybody's minds, and it's not how the real world works. It's just not. So social media and music is what I'm going to say. Nobody really thinks for themselves anymore. Okay. And contestant number four. Um, I'll keep it short, but basically I'll say lack of communication um, it's very, very big to communicate when you're, when you're in a relationship, because when you think about it, you're going to get married to this person, hopefully. And, um, if that happens, things aren't always going to be so bright. So, you know, the best way to solve those issues, those problems is to communicate. And, you know, I found like a lot of my friends, a lot of people I'm around, you know, have problems with the relationships just because they're going to other people to talk about this and that that their significant other did and it's like if you would have just went to your significant other the first time you probably wouldn't have had that issue that problem whatever the case may be you could have solved it in the blink of an eye but because you decided to go to social media like my boy said or you know go to you listen to the music and let that influence you or whatever the case may be it's like it's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Even if you don't do those things and you don't have communication, you gotta have it's communication. It's not a short answer, all. bro. All right. It is the end of this round. We already know what Daddy said, man. End of the round. I know Small those are pretty fry, good man. responses. The king, great man. responses. Unfortunately, we do have to get rid of one of those guys. We gotta eliminate them. Um. So the person I'm picking this round to eliminate will be two. contestant number two. Okay. Told you. Okay, I'm gonna have you stand on over there. Okay. And on. contestant number two, let me have you come on out. Little jacuzzi bird. All right, you can stand right over there. Okay, so why do we lean towards eliminating contestant oh, number two? I Ooh, think like five, for six. me, when it came around to that date question, I kind of feel like it was not really like a lot of effort thought or put into it when it came to what could possibly be done. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just me. You see that? Contestant number two didn't put enough effort into the actual question. Not that he didn't answer the question, because the second dude, the other dude with the fire shirt on, he didn't answer that question either. But he put in a lot of effort, even though he didn't know what he wanted to do. Me, like, I'm definitely like a more outgoing girl, I feel like. So I don't know. I just feel like just I a didn't more. really resonate that much with your answer okay. today. All right. And then, sorry, if you can remind us of your name again. Andre. Oh, Andre, you don't got a mic? No, I got it. Oh, there you go. Andre. <laughs> Andre, okay. Well, Andre, we do thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> we are in our final round. Final round. Final, final round. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and uh, continue on to our questions. We do have contestant four and five left, so let's okay. get in with the first question. So oh, what I would like to know is what is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Ooh. Oh, this nigga's going to give the fucking... Oh, I wasn't supposed to curse. He's going to give a crazy, long-winded, very distracting answer. And it's going to be so annoying. I'm kind of starting not to like this dude because his level of manipulation. But let's get it, though. Ooh, okay, contestant number four. Um, I've done a lot of spontaneous things. I'm glad he could go first, though. He didn't have time to think about it. So, um, for an example, I drove myself across the country, changed my life. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Originally nah, man. From Kenya, but I moved to L.A., and I drove myself over there to pursue my dreams and my career. But I will say the biggest thing I've done was, I would say, uh, well, I'm gonna give you two. <laughs> um, I flew out of the country alone to London, had the best experience of my life. But the biggest thing I wanted to say was I jumped off like one of the buildings in Las Vegas. It's called the Strat Tower. Um, it really boosted my confidence. I'm not going to lie. I was like, I can do anything. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm fearful. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Contestant number five. Let's hear from you. Spontaneous. Uh, contestant number five, G. You moved? That's spontaneous to you? I mean, if you moved like that same day, but you have to think about that. That's not spontaneous. That's the, that's the opposite of spontaneous. That's very calculating, but okay. Uh, the most spontaneous thing I think I've ever done was kind of the same thing he did. Traveled a little bit, um, went to Paris for a week, then took a train to Amsterdam, was there for a week. You know, that traveling stuff and going out the country was, was really just... Maybe I don't know what spontaneous means. Okay, so the, one of the most spontaneous things I've ever done was I woke up in the morning Okay, I do know what spontaneous means. I woke up in the morning, took off of work for two days, and packed my bag, and I came to L.A. And I didn't even know I was going to do that the night before. I didn't know I was going to do that uh, until four hours before my plane left. That's spontaneous. Not planning out a trip for months, saving up your money, and then deciding to do it on a specific day. That's not spontaneous. A, a nice break from everything. Um, you know what? <clears throat> In my defense, I was having a lot of mental health issues back then. So that's probably not what grown-ups do. And these guys seem a little bit more organized and mature than me five years ago. So, yeah. But that's not spontaneous. But that's probably the most spontaneous thing. I was like, yeah, let me get my passport, start checking off these countries, getting these stamps. Went to Jamaica too, but nothing compared. I was out in Paris for fashion week, so I was like, I gotta go. I need to get lit, and that's what I did. That took months of planning, bro. You didn't already have your passport. You didn't do it like within two days. You did it like you did a lot to make this not spontaneous. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What would you say is the most spontaneous thing you've done? Oh wow. <laughs> She's like, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I feel like I've done a lot in my life, but kind of piggybacking off of like them is just definitely being able to solo travel as well as like um, with my best friend. We actually share the same birthday. So we always travel together and I feel like my times with her are just always so grand and I'm so appreciative of the time we have together. So I would say like, my times there is always just so spontaneous. It's just, I love it, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and start off with that second yeah. question. So my second question is like, what's a long-term goal you guys would like to achieve? Okay, let's start with contestant five. Business. Oh, I'm sorry, contestant number five. Um, definitely financial freedom. Um, I do not like stress. I mean, I know it's a part of like everyday life, but I know like me personally, I like to, you know, have a good time. So I would love to be 
I, I understand financial freedom is not necessarily like super duper tame, but I would love to just be able to do whatever I want. I just feel like I don't want to stress about bills, yada, yada. So I definitely think um, a long term goal is to get myself good now. So in the long run, I don't really have to worry about stuff like, you know, like I said, I just bought my dream car at 24. I'm about to be 25. So I kind of let you know where I plan on heading. Um, so I'm just like, I don't really care about, you know, the fun stuff now. Like I, I can do that later on if I just know to play on my cards right. So right now, nah, man. Shouldn't have said that. She just said she needs fun because she has a problem. You said, I don't care about the fun stuff now. Maybe she didn't catch that. Who knows? She probably did, though. It's time to grind and build, um, build, build my legacy. So when I do decide to settle down, you know, have kids and everything, I can do that without, you know, really having to worry about it. So um, definitely financial freedom for sure. Okay. Contestant number four. Um, honestly, I'm really, really, really interested in building a family because uh, that's just something I didn't grow up with, like, a lot around me. As far as, like, intermediate family. Intermediate family. Nigga, you mean a media family? Because you said you had family before. I didn't grow up with a lot of that around me, but I have always had, like, cousins and aunties and uncles and stuff around me. But ultimately... It's just getting to where God wants me to be urgently because life is really, really short. And when you think about it, there really is no time. Like, there's no time at all to do anything. So I just want to do everything that I'm supposed to do, everything that I'm meant to do while I'm here. And I want to succeed and strive. You see how she, he's doing that? This BS would just say, look at his face, bro. Your answer is everything. That's your long-term goal. He's just, he is just doing this this spaghetti thing where he's just throwing any of this gumbo, bro, this word gumbo, bro. Like, he's really just saying whatever. He's not making any sense. He's not answering the question. He's making sense, but he's not answering the question. Like, you're saying everything. Like, one thing, bro. Like, I used to, I've, of course, see, now... I know his little game, bro. He's just saying everything because he can't think of one thing that he wants that she wants him to say. That at the fullest of my capabilities, basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Next right question. Here. So uh, my final that. question for this round is: How do you like to show your affection? To oh my God. Here we go. Now you got to fight back with him saying everything. You got to say, you can't just say something. You got to say everything too, bro. Now, of course, we're in this weird little era with this whole love language thing, which is my least favorite thing to hear coming out of anybody's mouth. But they're going to say, depending on your love language, because my love language is touch. But let's see. I might be wrong. Uh, the I'm people not. you care about. Okay, contestant number four. Quality time. Um, Which is a love language. Whoever I love is, is someone that I want to be around. So if that's you, then I just want to be around you and um, spoil you, treat you to what you like to do. But, you know, that goes vice versa. You know, we do that towards each other, which builds a better relationship versus one person just doing something. But honestly, it's it's quality time. Um, getting to know my partner, because you can never know someone 100%. There's always something that you're gonna miss or something that you need to know that you didn't know, something you can do better. And I know everyone likes attention, everyone, you know, in general. So showing that girl, that woman attention is very important for me because I know without that, there's a lot of problems that can, you know, that can hinder your relationship and, and whatever the case may be. And I don't want any problems in my relationship. So it's just quality time, attention, and um, yeah, just love and care, really. Okay. Nigga, did, did you see? How do you show your partner love, love and care at the end? Yeah. All right, let's hear he from... He didn't do as bad as I thought he was. Lesson five. 
Um, I think for me, showing my affection, like I said, I was raised a certain way. So it's definitely going to be, I hate to say it, a little bit more on the materialistic side. I'm definitely in tune with my affection and obviously being able to speak. Um, but I know me, like I said, I like nice things. So if you buy me some nice thing, that's my love language. So I'm going to reciprocate that to you. as. Didn't I tell you? He said it, and I like this guy. Well, as you know, as well as a verbal and like, you know, like reassure you side. Um, quality time for sure is just, you know, I'm... I like you. I'm gonna buy you a bag or something, you know. But that's only if you my girl. That's only you my girl though. Like no, whatever. So, but uh, but definitely the. I'm, I'm, I look nice. I want you to look nice. You know what I'm saying? So okay. that's kind of it. Sir, no, she's gonna take the dude with the fire shirt. All right. Tough one. We're down to our last she's two guys. Our last two men. Elimination time. She's gonna pick the dude with the fire shirt. Which one out of these two contestants, all of the responses really resonated with you, you loved what you heard, whatever it may be, which one out of these two are we eliminating? I think for me, it'll be contestant number five. Oh, I think overall, I, I was kind of leaning towards the other person more. Mm -hmm. um, and just like- Yeah, because he seems like he had a dad growing up more so than the other dude. Uh, he had cousins and aunties and uncles. He didn't say anything. But look, all of the affection and just the the game, the game, the strategy, the the just speaking, saying whatever, saying everything and saying nothing at the same time, keeping it very not simple, cause this dude kept it simple and he said he didn't care about having fun stuff right now and he's gonna show you affection by buying you stuff. That's not good, bro. The attention to detail and just like the intention of what you want going into. My bad. Let me run that back. Towards the other overall, it'll be contestant number five. Okay. I think overall, I was kind of leaning towards the other person more mm -hmm. um, and just like the attention to detail and just like the intention of what you want going into a relationship and building that intention which means <clears throat> it didn't matter that he wasn't answering the questions he just had a lot of passion and emotion the de her saying attention to detail a de no he didn't have attention to detail because he didn't answer the he didn't answer the questions he didn't answer the questions with the words he answered the questions with emotions with energy that's what he did he's an artist bro i don't want to say he mastered it but he practices that on a daily basis this guy the other dude contestant number five he was just in his masculine he was just being straightforward he didn't i don't want to say he seemed like he didn't care a lot because he has all whatever he wants at the crib but yeah no nah. That was a good that good game, man. Good game. With the person. So I think the other person. But the upside is I think that bro would be more physically attractive to her, though. I would say that. Even though I like the other dude more because he just seems like a cooler guy in a certain way. But it is what it is, man, with your little, with your Kenyan trickery. Answers resonated more. with me more okay. versus contestant number five today. All right, let both me great. Have you you okay. can go ahead and stand on over there. She should have told All right, us contestant. Why. See, Arla, you supposed to do your job. You supposed to ask what you didn't like about bro. Why did you pop his balloon? i come on out. Good luck, she gonna be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have you stand there. Hi. Okay, if you want to remind yeah. us of your name again. Uh, hi, my name you is Kyle. She stepped away from him. Hi. Okay. Stand there. Okay, okay, if you want to remind yeah. us of your name again. Uh, hi, my name is Kai. Hi, okay. So yeah. you did end up eliminating him. Was okay. there anything specific he said that you were like, oh, you know what? I'm definitely going to steer more towards contestant number four. Um, I think it was kind of your last comment on my final answer in terms of Money. the materialistic. I, I love gifts. I love giving gifts to my friends and my family. It's also right. another love language of mine, but I think like that bond is much more important to me than 
you know yeah, the other stuff no for sure yeah. yeah that's why i said i was like you know i was raised a certain way so like i understand my yeah. view is gonna be a little different but okay absolutely yeah. all right well yeah. thank you so much for coming on nice we appreciate you. you nice meeting you as well yeah. okay oh. Stay right okay. on there, girl. Mm, yes. Okay. Yes, so right you did end up picking contestant number, number four. four. Mm -hmm. So oh. let's go ahead and bring out your match. Come on out. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you? That shirt is trash. I'll you have you just stand Cheryl. over here. Bro. Cheryl. Tavia. Tavia, Tavia, nice to meet you. Yeah, you're beautiful. Thank okay. you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I know you said a lot of his responses like really resonated with What's you. Up, mm -hmm. What really Thank like you. sealed the deal for you? I just think like... <laughs> Look at bro smile. <laughs> when is the last time you got it, man? Why are you smiling like that, G? You really think this is your wife? You're not going to know this girl for more than two years, bro. Sorry. How man, I don't know. I the way you articulated things like Sheesh, look at that one. That's just kinda She got that. She used to do some kind of sport in high school. I'm not gonna even say because I, I don't wanna sound creepy. On to mm -hmm. that some was already a creepy a comment though. My bad. Like my answers I asked today. Okay. And also um your view on like mental health and everything. Like that's so His view on mental health, this nigga said he didn't believe in getting therapy. And he's never been to therapy. All the other people have been to therapy. You see the energy. She doesn't even remember what this nigga said for real. Cause he said everything and nothing. But I know he definitely said he didn't want to go to see a therapist, but he was open-minded. You see that? <laughs> Jeez. To me, I'm a big, big advocacy for therapy. Mm -hmm. um, but so you picked the nigga whose parents were therapists? Oh yeah, I think- I mean, you picked the, you, you eliminated the dude whose parents work in behavioral health? And this nigga said he never would go to mental uh, therapy before. He's never been to. What is wrong with me? Let me just play the video. That's just my final, you know. Okay. I was just, I was just like, okay, like I think I'm leaning more towards this way, and I think like just as we went on, that's just kind of sealed the deal for me. All right. So now you see your, you see your day. How yeah. are you feeling? How are you feeling, sir? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Money Man. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, but she's a beautiful young lady. Yeah. Um, I loved your responses too when she did ask you, you know, some questions. Mm -hmm. um, Which ones, nigga? You lying. You don't remember what she said. I really like your vibe and everything like that. You have a beautiful smile as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. We're real happy. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear about this follow up. Yeah. Okay. I hope we get lots of dates and we hear good stuff. Yes, I'm yes. really, really happy for you, too. Can we go yeah. skydiving? Oh, oh. Just playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to go skydiving, bro? You don't even got on the right size belt. What are you talking about? You want to go skydiving? You don't trust straps that much. <laughs> All right. You guys yeah. keep going on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of Blind Date Love. If you'd like to be featured in any of our upcoming episodes. This one was cool. I just want to look at our left for a little couple more minutes. I mean, this one was all right. You know, I don't think I'm going to be jumping out the window to really watch this one. I do like Pop the Balloon a lot more because it's just so much easier to watch different types of behavior and roast people. But you know what? It's cool, man. It was a good little investment. But, um... Uh, it is what it is. It's not what it's not. It's Aaron Moses. I'm the band. You the band. We the band together, man. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to do a reaction to next. P. Oh, wait, wait. Life is in the breath. Breathe it in. Peace. Gang.